good day. Hey, you going? What do you know? Don't strike a light. Good day, good day. And how you going? Just say good day, good day, good day, and you'll be right. Welcome to the Midweek in Times News and Trends Briefing as we share major events and what is happening around the world as it relates to Bible prophecy. Today's date is April 11th, 2018. Hope you're all doing great and having a fantastic week. Uh, as we're seeing so much developing throughout the world and especially in the Middle East with Israel, Syria, Russia, Turkey, Lebanon, Iran, uh, Saudi Arabia, Egypt, and the terrorist organizations of Hamas, Hezbollah, and the Palestinians. We're seeing the tensions continue on a daily basis, hourly basis, if you will. We're looking from a biblical perspective, looking at Psalm 83, Ezekiel 38, Zechariah 12, Isaiah 17, even Matthew 24, as we're starting to see these signs and rumors of wars and wars are developing uh, all these development coming together, all these pieces of the puzzle getting closer and closer to being fulfilled. It's just a matter of time, whether it's days, weeks, or perhaps months, even years to that matter. But what we're seeing right now, what has taken place, it's not going to be years. It's probably going to be within days to months Uh before we see the escalation of the the development and of the wars that would probably break out. But here's some news items that to grab our attention this week. Out of the Times of Israel, Israeli military on high alert and amidst uh, Iran threat to avenge Syria's strike. So the Israeli military has been put on high alert and heightened tensions along the northern border and with Iran threatening to avenge uh, an airstrike on the Syrian airbase believed to have killed 14 people, including seven Iranian military personnel. Syria, Russia, Iran, and the United States have all said that Israel carried out the pre-dawn Monday missile barrage on the T-4 airbase in central Syria. The Israeli air, uh, officials refused to comment on the strike. On Tuesday, the top advisor to the Iran Supreme leader Atollah Khomeini uh, threatened Israel and said that the crimes will not remain unanswered, he said, according to official uh, Re Islamic Republic news agency. Iran's foreign ministry also accused Israel of a flagrant aggression in Syria following the attack. Israel's officials didn't appear to be taking the threat of retaliatory attack lightly, either by Iran or its proxy of the Hezbollah terrorist group. On Tuesday, also, the Israeli defense minister appeared to elude the strike, saying that Israel will not allow Iranian enrichment or entrenchment in Syria, whatever the cost. So they're doing preemptive strikes uh, so that way they don't come in on the aggressive end and attack Israel. Also, top Iranian officials say that uh, Israel to face response over air base attack, according to the Jerusalem Post. Syria, Iran, Russia have accused Israel of being behind the strike, something Israel has either confirmed or denied. Allegations from Tehran and Ma Moscow uh, that Israel carried out the bombing that caused serious damage on the Iran targets raised the likelihood of deterioration in the military situation between Iran and Israel. Iran may increase its attempt to strike at Israel uh, via the Golan Heights using Hezbollah and the Shiite proxies from the Foreign Legion uh, it established in Syria. On another piece of uh, news items that was more of an analysis, uh, this came out of the Israeli National News, that talks about Russia is aiding Iran Axis prepare for war with Israel. So Netanyahu has uh, always said that the deployment of Iranian-backed pro-Assad coalition near Israeli border constituted a red line. With all eyes on Israel's southern front where Hamas is desperately trying to conceal the fact that it's running out of military option is never-ending war against the Jewish state, Hezbollah and the pro-Assad Axis seem to be gearing up for the long-anticipated confrontation with the Israel Israeli Defense Force. Iran and Israeli media reported last week that the pro-Assad coalition is preparing for an offensive against Islamic rebel groups in the provinces of southern Syria. 
the pro-Assad axis, which also includes Hezbollah and other Shiite militias, uh, reported de deploying tanks and heavy artillery on the Syrian Golan Heights and some of the weaponry placed with the demilitarized buffer zone along the Israeli uh, border is a clear violation of the 1974 uh, armistice agreements between Syria and Israel, which officially ended the Yom Kippur War. On another uh, interesting news uh, article out of the Jerusalem Post talks about the Syrian-Iranian cleric um, and saying that Hezbollah will destroy Haffa and Tel Aviv. Uh, so the um, guy uh, here, Katama, has also suggested that uh, Israel will destroy, be destroyed within the next 25 years or even before then. Atoli Ahmad Kamatai, the senior member of Iran's Assembly of Exports, threatened Hez that Hezbollah will turn Haffa and Tel Aviv into ghost towns with the group's 70-kilometer range missiles uh, from a, a sermon that he did in the uh, mosque on Friday. You've tried your chances twice. And failed, Katama said, according to the Iran Student News Agency, despite the fact that Hezbollah is stronger today than ever, if you want Tel Aviv and Haffa raised to the ground, try your chances again, he threatens. So the report states that Katama uh, was responding to a statement by Israel that the conflict with Hezbollah is possible in the coming year. This year is the this is the year that the potential for escalation, not necessarily because either side wants to initiate it, but because the gradual deterioration. Uh, this has led to the rise of level of preparedness of the head of uh, Israeli Defense Force operations mentions. Hezbollah, as we know, currently possesses an arsenal of approximately 150,000 missiles. Uh, Israel's last fought against the uh, this milita group was back in 2006 uh, in the Second Lebanese War. Katama also denounced the Saudi Arabia for its increasingly close ties with Israel in the wake of the Saudi Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman statement saying that Israel has a right to exist on their own land. Also within the, the region, uh, this report came out of the DEPCA, which talks about how the U.S., France, and the United uh, Kingdom uh, prepare air naval units for sustained assault in Syria. So uh, President Donald Trump's major decision on Syria is contingent on the rallying of sufficient air and naval strength of allied participants. According to Debka's uh, military sources report that the only U.S. warship immediately available for the promised U.S. military response to Bashar Assad's use of chemical weapons uh, is the guided missile destroyer U.S. Donald Cook, which sailed uh, from La Lanka on Monday on its way to the eastern Mediterranean. Other strike groups of the military, uh, which uh, visited Haffa uh, the last month cruising the Arabian Sea, is days away from the scene, and also uh, U.S. Uh, uh, Truman Carrier Strike Group it only departs uh, uh, for the Middle East uh, today on Wednesday um, the 11th and is not due to the Mediterranean before next week. So the Trump administration is negotiating with Britain France and other allies, including Arab governments, for their roles in the Syrian operation. The Washington sources report that the commander-in-chief is looking for a major operation in Syria to unfold in the next several days and lead to a concerted ally assault in the Iran military presence embedded in the country, and this extended goal may give U.S. allies pause. So the tension continues to go there. Also with the U.S. and the, the nuke deal that's on the table right now that uh, it's heading toward that deadline, uh, Iran threatens to renew enrichment. So this came out of the Jerusalem Post. How Iran will be able to restore its halted uranium enrichment process in a matter of hours and produce enriched uranium stockpiles in less than two days if the nuclear day deal is discarded. According to the Atomic Energy Organization of Iran, spokesman uh, warned Monday, according to uh, Iranian FAR uh, news agency, 
that he explained that there's currently over 1,600 centrifuges uh, in the four-toed uh, reactor uh, spinning idly that could be used for enrichment. So they're ready for the development of their nuclear bomb. So as we say each week, so much is happening, so much is going on on a daily basis in dealing with the Middle East. Uh, and as it says in Matthew 24, there will be wars and rumors of wars, kingdom against kingdom. These are the signs of the end times. We're seeing these things right now. And here's the thing that we see on the timeline of biblical prophecy. We're on the final stretch before the tribulation period. So this is a warning. This is a wake-up call for all believers to be watchful, to be alert, to keep our eyes on Jesus Christ. The Lord is coming back at any time for the rapture of the church, the bride of Christ. We don't know when. We just need to be prepared to be busy, to occupy about the Lord's business, to share the gospel with as many people as possible, to live and to walk in holiness, not in compromise, uh, to walk in wisdom, to walk in the Spirit, and to walk in love. Amen? And may the Lord give you the wisdom, the grace, the strength, and the provision and protection that you need today. Until next time, God bless.